Okay, you guys, put your seatbelt on for this one. Um, look at this. It looks like this demon is coming out of my eye. Would you believe this? It's bad. I was, I did the, um, the deliverance videos again last night. I don't know, about another two or three hours. I, I actually felt myself getting all nauseous. So they're getting ready to leave. Um, so I have some things to tell you today that are going to be extremely controversial and my only, my only hope is that they will help the people involved here. I don't understand why I'm getting these visions and why these messages are coming to me, but they are coming to me and I'm being instructed to share them with you. So the, um, I've always done what I was told to do and I will continue. But believe me, I truly don't understand what's happening here. And um, if I consistently sit and question this, uh, I could literally drive myself crazy. So um, I'm not questioning anything. I'm just following with the instructions I'm being given. Um, last night, I don't know if you've seen, and everything I'm telling you now, I will put the, the supporting videos in the description. So yesterday you saw I put up the song Purple Rain. That song to me has, from the second I heard it, had touched my soul more than any Christian song I had ever heard in my life. That song, I envisioned God and the, the Purple Rain to me is the love and the blessings and the grace just being showered upon everybody. That's what I see in this song, just literally, oh, I'm getting God bumps. This song just literally touches me to my core. Um, that was why, and I was literally told by the Holy Spirit last night to sing that song. And um, because I was actually on the computer getting ready to watch the deliverance videos. I was told, go sing this song. What happened? The second I started singing that song, I started coughing like more demons were coming out. And um, I continued. I sang that song about five times. And then I started getting the picture of Nithya Nanda. That, and this is what every single one of us has to understand. Um, especially if you have been severely abused. The mind typically tends to dissociate on its own. The psychological mind. Now, I, I, I keep telling you I don't have a psychological mind anymore. It doesn't mean it's not here any longer. It means it's not functioning for me any longer. I don't have any thoughts. I don't see any thoughts. It's gone. It, it doesn't mean that, that that aspect of who I was born as is, is gone from here. It's just that I have transcended it. Okay? So what it does to the form, though, it remember when the form was born and the second that we knew we were separate from God and everybody else, the psychological mind was created as well. So as long as we're in this form, and this Sargadatta said this as well, as long as we are in the form, we will have thoughts. Okay, which means the psychological mind will always be here. What happens with those of us who have awakened is that we have transcended the psychological mind. So whether it's the fact that I just don't pay attention to these, uh, these thoughts if they're here, I don't know. All I can tell you is, according to me, uh, according to someone who used to be debilitated with visual flashbacks, my mind is completely still. And this demon is trying to hurt me now. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You believe this sucker? He's hurt my ear. I bind you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I command you to get out of this form in the mighty name of Jesus Christ putting pressure in my ear to hurt my ear. So what I did was, so, so we have to understand that the mind will do that. The psychological mind will, will uh, try to protect us. Even though we're not seeing the psychological mind anymore, it will still try to protect us and dissociate when things hurt us. Um, and this is what I'm starting to understand right now. And, um, so we have to understand that even though I went through the process of renunciation, 
um, repentance, forgiveness, asking God to forgive me of any unforgiveness. Even I, I went that day to ask the Holy Spirit to search me for any unforgiveness that I still carried. And what happened, the, uh, my cousin and uh, the kid of hers that I raised who, who seriously hurt me, they came up and I wasn't even thinking about them. They were still here. So the Holy Spirit showed me them and I forgave them. So Nithya Nanda has been a process for me because he has hurt me that bad. And I keep saying, and as we go through the process, as we get rid of more junk, we feel lighter, we feel freer. So we think, oh, this is finally over now. I really have forgiven him. And then more stuff. It's like the peeling the layers of the onion, okay? So as I told you, I am constantly working on myself and doing introspection. So this is what happened yesterday. I was told by the Holy Spirit, go sing that song, Purple Rain. I was then shown about the fourth time that I sang the song. I was then shown a picture of Nithya Nanda. And I knew why I was told to sing that song. Okay, I had to let Nithya Nanda go, release him to Jesus. And... What actually happened? I literally saw Jesus. I saw a vision of Jesus. He had the white robe on with the gold sash on it. And he, and he was standing there like this. And you saw me in the video. I had my eyes closed and I went like this. Nithi Ananda was in my, my hands. Nithi Ananda was, of course, miniature. He was in my hands. And I was lifting him up to Jesus. And Jesus was standing there like this. And what happened? The second that I placed Nithya Nanda in Jesus' hands, it's like a cage surrounded him, but the cage was flowing water, flowing purple water, the purple rain. So Jesus had Nithya Nanda in his hands, but he was confined to this place where he was inside, but yet not able to receive the grace, the love, and... Uh, um, <clears throat> the blessings of God but they were all around him he was confined by that okay they were not iron bars they were not made of fire they were made of the purple rain what, what I always envisioned that song to be was love uh, blessings and grace well Nithya Nanda was put inside of that and he was caged by it but he would he would not be able to receive it that's what actually happened yesterday and you saw at the end of that song I just lifted my hands up because it was finally over for me Nithya Nanda in the spirit realm he is now in the hands of Jesus and I I don't have to deal with him anymore okay so what happened I'm gonna stick with Nithya Nanda I'm not gonna go in chronological order of events um, so what happened with Nithya Nanda this morning, I was led to listen to the book of Esther in the Bible. And I want you to understand, I'll actually write this in the description, the book of Esther. I was shown everything that Nithya Nand is doing. Um, he told everybody what he was doing. He didn't lie to anybody. He didn't lie to anybody. Um, he said he, he was bringing everybody back to the very beginning of, of the Vedic life the Vedic times which means back when the Nephilim were on the planet and um, he fancies himself as a king or an emperor and the fact that he can have many wives and this is what happened I was listening to the book of Esther and this is what happened uh, he, it was the king of Persia and as I've learned from the Bible, it is the prince of Persia that is that is referred to as Satan. Okay, this guy was the king of Persia, and um, Esther lost her mother and her father, and she was brought to the this place where she might be chosen by the king to be one of his wives. Um, and he was sleeping with children. Well, what they had to do was they had to. Um, prep their body for him with lotions and oils for a year, learn how to put their makeup on. This is exactly what Nithya Nanda is doing over there as per the descriptions of Sarah Landry. And 
in the in the book of Esther, it talks about having a concubine. I didn't even know what that meant. Um, I heard the word before, but I had no idea even what it meant. So I went to go look it up. And I took a picture of it. Guys, I swear, put your seatbelt on you because you're not going to believe what, what was shown to me. So what is a concubine? Concubine is an interpersonal and sexual relationship between a man and a woman in which the couple does not want or cannot enter into a full marriage. Now, do concubines still exist? Concubinage still exists today in various forms. Women are not forced into it like they were. And it is still mostly among Asian wealthy class. Having a concubine or mistress is accepted as part of the culture in Asia. The role of women is still second to that of men. So I understand perfectly. There are, are something called bound concubines. There are, there are, there is something called bound concubines. Anyone who Nithyananda sent this demon to, who keeps saying it's married, this is this is what we supposedly are to him. And um, I just never understood any of this because nobody ever explained any of this to me. Nobody ever explained any of this to me. So he can have um, ones that he considers his wives and ones that he considers concubines. So he could be sleeping with hundreds of women all over the place, and it's okay. It's okay. Um, so I want you to understand from, this is all going back to the Old Testament. Um, I don't even know how, how to keep this straight. This is all going back to the Old Testament. This is why Jesus was born over there. And, um, the immorality, the sexual immorality, the, the, the occult, the, the sorcery, the, the idol worshiping, it was all there. It was all there. I finally understand what Nithyananda is doing and he didn't lie to anybody. And I also want you all to understand, um, he is not just a, a bad person. He is literally a demon. Understand this the this king over there was the it's, it was said it was the king of Persia it, it is the prince of Persia that is described in the Bible as Satan the devil, okay, he's a literal demon That he has these powers that he could send these things here and uh, Call him his divya sharita and and say he's married and, and here was the thing who the hell does he think he is? Who the hell does he think he is to say that he's married to me without my permission? Am I somebody's luggage? This was always my thing. You heard me say this all the time. Am I somebody's luggage? Well, I am nobody's luggage. Now I fully understand what's in his mind and he's absolutely lost it. He's absolutely lost it. Here's the other thing that I can tell you from that story, the book of Esther how Nithyananda will, will uh, be taken down because it's all following. See, God has foretold this story already. God's words are eternal. They don't change. So here is how Nithyananda will be brought down. In 465, the king, who Nithyananda is saying he is right now, was murdered by his Vizier or Vizier, V-I-Z-I-E-R, Artabanus, who raised Artavirixus I to the throne. In the Bible, more specifically, in the book of Esther, Zerus I is mentioned by the name Ahasuerus, 
Esther was chosen as his queen. So what it is, the person, the, the person closest to him, this is what always happens. This is what always happens. The person closest to him will actually cause his demise as they are plot as they will be plotting to bring someone else up into power. They will literally assassinate Nithyananda. This is according to the Bible. Because they are living out and playing out everything from this book. It was all shown to me. So it is the person that he feels is closest to him that he feels has helped him the most to rise to power. That is the person who is going to um, turn on him as they try to bring someone else up to power. Okay, now that's according to the book of Esther. Now here's the other thing that I was shown. I told you guys, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, or whatever it was. I just have no sense of time any longer. Um, that I was shown that Nithya Nanda was, was uh, cursing these pastors and, and uh, sending spirits over there. And um, it's it's not because he was sticking up for me that he did, that he did, that he didn't want me associating with them because he's trying to hurt me. No, he was trying to hurt them and get them away from me because he didn't want them helping me to get the spirit out of here. This is what the whole thing was. And this is what I tried to explain to these pastors. And then I got the message: repent, or the Lord is going to allow you to experience what is coming for you. Do you all remember this? Okay, now put your seatbelts on, you guys. I can't explain this. I don't understand this. Yesterday, Mike puts a video out. I will put it in the description. Where he literally attacks Bob Larson. Says anyone who charges for deliverance is demonic. Bob Larson... There's, there's a special message that I have for Barb Larson. So if anyone out there, any of you demon slayers that I know are stalking my page now, maybe you might want to get this message to him. Bob Larson last week was seriously attacked by a person that he was doing an exorcism on. Uh, he showed the video. He was knocked out cold. Um, here's what I was shown. The demon that attacked him and punched him jumped into his form while he was knocked out. That's what I was shown. Here's what's happened to Bob Larson. I've told you guys over and over again. He's, he's done exorcisms on many people from New Age, from the occult. I've watched so many of his videos. And I've always told you guys... Um, I never felt any hatred or prejudice from him towards New Age or mystics or witchcraft or the occult, anything. So I felt very comfortable telling you guys to go to him. Well, that has changed since his knockout. That, that has all changed. Bob Larson's whole personality has changed. And um, so what happened? The first thing he did was he put out the video attacking Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And I actually noticed some comments on, on that video that people were saying to him, Bob, you know, you can just you can just do a video on the dangers of witchcraft. Why do you have to personally attack people? You know, that's not cool. People were picking up that there was something not right here. So there was a change in Bob Larson. And it disturbed me. And I, although I never mentioned his name, I said I saw a video that was attacking Prince Harry. And... Um, I just let it go after I said what I said. Uh, so what happened? Last night, Bob Larson is doing another exorcism. And who does he have on there? Vlad's Duboy. Vlad's Duboy. And I was shown that this was uh, uh, in direct account of that video. And, and what I said about uh, his video on Prince Harry was directly why he did this. And um, so we had Vlad's Duboy on there. Put him on camera. And he made a special, special effort to say, Hi, hey, Pastor Vlad, if you're watching, hey. Now, understand one thing. 
Um, I have been watching Bob Larson. You guys who have been on my page for a long time, you know me. When I get my mind set on something, that's it. Uh, the same way I learned about narcissistic abuse, I binge watched Sam Vaknin's videos until I knew everything I needed to do. Same thing about Nisargadatta. I listened to his books day and night, 24-7, until I was a realized being. And now, same thing with Bob Larson. I, I had to know about these demons and demon possession. I have been binge watching his videos. And I can tell you the Bob Larson you're seeing right now is not Bob Larson. Okay. So what he did, um, his behaviors have become very dark. In that video he put out last night. Now, not only is he making a point of having Vlad's Duboy on there, who actually called me a liar. Um, and Vlad, who called me a demon, using the word of God, okay? Not cool. It is a sin. It is lawlessness, okay? Um, never, ever saw Bob Larson do anything like this. In that same video, he attacked Christians, told Christians, if you're not going to be out in the front lines casting out demons for people, don't worry about when the satanic temple comes into town. Never, ever ever heard him speak like that and then he made his little comment which was geared towards me or if you want to think about the universe whatever that means um i was shown that the demon that knocked him out had jumped in his form when he was out cold that is not bob larson that you're looking at okay so uh somebody might want to let him know that here's what i here's what i was shown um you know, and right after right after Mike made his video, the very first person that I ever heard speak about deliverance was someone called Evangelist Fernando Perez. And um, it appeared to me that he also heard Mike's video because Mike made a comment in there, no doubt geared at me, because I said that Dan was a true preacher as far as I was concerned because he's showing people that there's hope for them. By the grace of Jesus, there's hope for them. Um, not condemnation. Well, Mike in his video says, uh, people don't need to hear these grace pastors. This is why I, I teach what I teach. Um, and evangelist Perez made a video like right after that, talking about three types of deliverance ministers to stay away from. I am going to put all of these things in the description so you all can do your own research on this. I'm only going to tell you what I was shown. The Christian church is falling apart at the seams. As I've been telling you, Jezebel is all up in this church. Okay? Jezebel is the one running the Christian church on this planet. Okay? Um, what you're seeing with these deliverance, I can't call them ministers. Um, it, it appears like they're all possessed by demons and they don't realize it. They're attacking each other now. What did I say? I, I told them weeks ago what was happening, what Nithya and Ando was doing, and they, they wanted to laugh in my face. And um, here it is. They're all attacking each other now. They're attacking each other. I read a Bible verse that as you, as you um, I believe it was in Matthew, as you judge other people, you know, take the plank out of your own eye before you look at the speck in your brother's eye. And as you attack people, you will be judged with that same measure that you use to attack people. This is exactly what's happening here. This is exactly what hap what's happening here. They literally attacked me and called me a demon and said I was a liar, that I didn't know what was going on with the occult and with New Age and Third Eye wasn't real and I didn't know what I was talking about. Well, here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. The Lord's message was, was repent or you will be allowed to experience what is going to happen to you. And here it is. Here it is. And I would like to read you something. Psalm 23. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. 
Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So understand all of these attacks. Uh, the tarot demon, Nithyananda, Nithyananda goons, all of these pastors. Now, unfortunately, Bob Larson, um, you know, uh, yea, though I walk through the, the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Before every single person who has attacked me, the Lord has set a table for me. Why? Because I am a true servant. That's why. And there is no ego. So, um, I pray that someone will speak to Bob Larson and let him know what I was shown. And, um, his behavior is out of the ordinary for, for himself. As far as all of the videos that I've seen of him, um, this is not Bob Larson that we're seeing. And so, well, I can't take anything personally anymore anyways, because there is no person here. So, um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to get any kind of offended or any, anything out here. You know what? God's, God's word was spoken. That's all I could say. Each and every one of us has to, uh, submit. Each and every one of us has to submit. And I will say this, there is a place for all ministries on this planet, and they're all important. They're all important. You know, it's the Christians who never heard about uh, these demons and demon possessions and, and to know how to renounce generational curses and all this stuff. Never understood any of this stuff, which is why we spent our entire life suffering. But for these... Uh, demon slayers out here to believe that their way is the only way and that demons are the only thing that should be spoken about they are they are completely deluded and misguided and satan is running them because what the focus should be should be jesus christ not these demons the focus should be jesus christ and that is exactly what dan said that is exactly what todd white said that is exactly what um, Evangelist Perez said. And uh, it seems that everybody out here likes attacking Joel Osteen. But all I have to say is, praise God for Joel Osteen. Praise God for Joel Osteen. You see, when you start to believe that you're so important, that, that other people need to follow you, or they're useless... Uh, even the Christians that are out here starting up uh, prayer teams to pray to get the Satan worshipers out. Yep, they're very important. Prayer is extremely important. But uh, last night, Bob Larson wants to say, if you're not going to get in the front lines and cast out demons, don't say anything. Is that right? I don't believe that's Bob, Bob Larson speaking there. And... Um, Here's the other thing that I want to tell you. You know, as I, as I told you, your love for God needs to be primary in your life. You want, you want to be in oneness with God more than you want your next breath. And he has left everything we need to know on this planet for us to find, to find the truth. Okay? Um, there are things that are, that are happening all around us that, that we have no idea about. Because you write something off as being occult or, or um, new age, you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. You see, as long as you are not calling on demons for powers or creating spells 
or anything like that, you're not practicing the occult or witchcraft. But there is information out there that I'm sharing, like the information from Nisargadatta. You know, you would never understand that even the empty space around you that you see as being empty is actually not empty. You see, Christians believe that, that they are saved and they're going right to heaven. Christians are in a coma. They are so asleep, they don't even know they're asleep. And that is the reality. They want to compartmentalize what they understand and what they don't understand as long as it suits them. So they will talk about demons constantly, demons that no one can see, but they understand that they're real because they're casting them out. But that's as far as it goes. They don't want to understand about energy or vibration. Uh, they, they will call on angels for help, angels that they can't see. That they'll accept and that they'll say is truth. But they don't understand how angels function, how angels can create forms for themselves. And they don't care to learn that because they label that new age. If you want to know the truth, God has put everything here for you. And that really is all there is. So all of these people have attacked me um, called me a liar, um, called me a demon. Although I'm a Christian, uh, I was baptized twice, uh, at once as a child, once as an adult in the water, um, made my communion confirmation. Um, now I'm back reading the Bible, understanding the Bible. Um, they're still calling me new ager demon and you know, as you judge other people, the, the same measure will be put onto you. This is exactly what is happening right now. This is exactly what's happening. See, these people want to quote Bible verses as long as it supports what they're doing and what they believe. And they will use the Bible to attack people. But they have not become the Bible. And that's the part they're missing. They're dead and asleep. They have not become the Bible. The Bible is factual. It is not just a book, it's factual. And I can tell you that without a doubt because I have experienced many of the things it speaks about. It is factual. So, um, what you see happening with, with these, just these little group of demon slayers here, how they're turning on each other and how they're turning on anyone who doesn't agree with what they say. Um, this is going on all over the Christian church. This is why people are leaving in mass droves. And it says in the book of Revelations that, that, God's people will be leaving the church and mass droves in the end times. Understand why Jezebel is running the church. So who are the real Christian pastors out here who are doing God's work? Well, it appears that it is these grace pastors out here that these demon slayers um, can't say nothing nice about. They're the ones telling people of God's grace and God's forgiveness no matter what they've done no matter what they've done these are the people that Jesus will look upon with grace and with love and with light when he returns because these are the pastors that are bringing people back to the church not forcing them out of the church you guys have a blessed day